part two. And I hope you've already watched part one of my story about Benjamin and my first cruise to England. Now, Benjamin is gone now. We're going to go from there. He died in December, 1996. Sandy's alone and we're keeping in touch with each other. She's had her memorial for Benjamin at the college and now we're ready to move on from there. <clears throat> now, I was telling you about the Santa Claus that I made for Benjamin. After everything was all over, it was January, January 1997, and I received a magazine in the mail. It was a magazine called In Britain. Very nice magazine. I, I liked everything about it. The photography, they were showing pictures of things I had seen while I was in England. And, and it, it was so good to have that feeling, oh, I've been there, oh, I saw that. And I took th this same picture that they've got in the magazine. It was, it was pretty nice. But who sent me the magazine? I couldn't imagine. Sandy had already told me that Benjamin, Benjamin received my Santa Claus. So I enjoyed the magazine. Still very curious to know who would have thought to subscribe to that book. February came, another magazine in Britain. I sure would like to know who's sending this to me. And I thought, maybe it's Sandy, but you hate to ask someone did you send me a magazine? And if they said no, kind of embarrasses them because I figured it was them. No. So I didn't say a word about this new magazine I got. March, a third magazine. I loved the magazine. It's almost my birthday and I'm talking to Sandy on the phone and she's asking me you know what I wanted for my birthday that sort of thing <clears throat> and I told her I said well Greg was asking me what I wanted for my birthday and I said I want the same thing you gave me last year and he said I don't remember what I gave you last year. What did I give you? I said, you gave me a subscription to a magazine. Oh, that was it. So I told that to Sandy and Sandy said, speaking of magazines, did you ever get one called In Britain? Yes, yes I did. I'm still getting it. She said, well, when Benjamin received his Alaskan Santa from you, he sat down, the first thing he did was subscribe to the magazine for you. He wanted you to have that magazine. And that was two days before he died. I was just am amazed 
But that sounded like Benjamin. He didn't put things off. He didn't give it a second thought. He wanted me to have that magazine. And there I'd gone almost five months without knowing he was my benefactor. So, I'll show you a picture. Here is in Britain. Now the fascinating thing about the picture on the front of this magazine, it brought to mind something. Well, actually I read to see who the artist was of this painting. And the artist was, happened to be Andrew Wythe, my favorite artist, American artist. So I checked his on further to see who was the person he painted. The man's name in the, for this picture was Christopher Carmack. Well, it just so happened that my grandmother's name was Carmack. Oh my goodness. Is it possible that this man on the front of this magazine might have been related to my grandmother? Well, I don't know if he was or not, but it's not a common name, Carmack. It's very possible that this man is part of my family. I'm just sort of hopefully guessing, let's put it that way, because for one thing, I liked Andrew White's work. And this man's name was a family name. So you know you put two and two together and you can create your own synopsis for another story. So, the reason I'm showing you the magazine is I want to read something to you. Let me see if I can find the page. Here it is. <clears throat> There's a page in this magazine that it letters to the editor. It has several letters and I'm going to read the first one to you. You listen closely. The print is small, so just bear with me. All right. Through a magazine competition three years ago, I won a voyage from New York to Southampton on the QE2. I had always wanted to visit Britain, the homeland of my ancestors. It was a dream come true. On the voyage, I made the acquaintance of a lovely couple from Ohio. An intimate bond was created which would develop into a lasting friendship. Leaving my friend after a tour of London, I traveled by coach through England, Wales, and Scotland. Nine days later, we met again for the return voyage to the United States. We said our goodbyes at the airport in New York City and returned home. Upcoming months would bring us together again for frequent weekend visits and holiday excursions. <clears throat> Being an avid craft person, I made a keepsake St. Nicholas doll for my friend as an early Christmas gift in 1996 when they were making arrangements for a return visit to England for the holiday season. On the 5th of December, two days after receiving my gift, the husband died suddenly from a cerebral aneurysm. You've heard this before. In January 1997, I received my first issue 
of in Britain. It was a welcome surprise. Again, in February, another copy arrived in the mail. Then another, and I had no idea who had provided the gift subscription or why. It wasn't until May that I finally discovered my benefactor. When he received the St. Nicholas doll, my dear friend was so delighted that he immediately subscribed to In Britain in my name. He knew I would enjoy the magazine, and he was right. Now, when it arrives every month, it has special meaning. Through each issue, I can continue to enjoy a little bit of Britain and also be reminded of the delightful times shared with a wonderful friend. This was the letter of the month in this In Britain magazine. Now, don't you think that is interesting? And of course, you can see at the bottom of the magazine where I have written, keep. In other words, this magazine won't be thrown away with a stack of others that I've completed. I was so surprised to learn that Benjamin had ordered this magazine for me and then to find my letter was the letter of the month. I thought you would appreciate that little story too. So that's all I've got to tell you. I've got the television set on and I'm watching a movie that I hope you have seen too. It's called Imitation of Life. Now, it's not the one with Lana Turner and John Gavin. It's the one with Claudette Colbert. And I don't remember the lady's name that plays in this movie. But this is the movie where they go into the pancake business. And you know from that... That's where you get the Aunt Jemima. The Aunt Jemima that they've tried to do away with on the syrup bottles and what have you. No, no, no. That's not a good idea. The Aunt Jemima pancake mix and the maple syrup. They've been around a long time. Why would we want to change anything like that? I hope you've seen this movie. If you haven't, next time it comes on, and I know it'll be on again in the future, make sure you watch it because it's a really good movie. And I don't know what year it was made in. I think it was probably about 1940. So I'm just telling you that because I like the movie. This I like movies like that. They, they, they touch you. They touch your heart. So, that's all I have to tell you. This is the second part of my story about Benjamin and about my first cruise to England. I'll be telling you more stories about going to England because I went three more times. Four times I went to England, and three of those times was by ship. The fourth time I flew. Those were good years, really good years. And the result of all of that was what you see behind me. See right here? That's my cookbook. That's entitled, Make Mine the Blue Plate Special. You know what is meant by the Blue Plate Special because one of my stories is about the Blue Plate Special. The second one, My Shadow's in the Way, 
There we go. The second one, well, let's go to the first one. The first one is, wait till you hear this one. That was my first, excuse me. That was my first book of 100 True Stories. Many of you have ordered that book, and I hope you have enjoyed the short stories, especially because they are true stories. You, you, you don't have to use your imagination. You don't have to make up things. You just tell it like it is. And if the people like it, that's to your benefit. So that was the first book. The second book was this one right here. Hold it, Lord, hold it. And at the bottom it says, I'm not finished yet. Now you can understand what I meant by that. I've got things to do. I've got stories to write. And I'm going to get on YouTube and have my own channel. Of course, I didn't tell that in the book because I didn't know I was going to do that. Now let's go on over here across the other side. And it's rather hard to see what this says, so I'll just tell you. It says, Room at the Foot of the Bed. Now I'm going to move that book so you can see it a little better, and I'm going to tell you about the book. See, it's a big 8 by 10 book. And you see the front of it? I worked with a lady who was an artist. She was very good, and one day I said, I want you to sketch a picture for me. I want it to be a picture of children in a bed because I want it as the cover of the book I'm writing, Room at the Foot of the Bed. She came back with this picture and I said, it's perfect. That's what I wanted. Just, I wanted it sketched. I didn't want it to look like a real picture. And as you can see, it fit the title, Room at the Foot of the Bed. Now this book is basically family history. I was doing it for all of my cousins, my family, aunts and uncles. And I sent them all letters telling them that I had done family history. It basically followed my line of the uh, ancestors, which meant the majority of them, it followed theirs too. So I started getting notes back. They all wanted a copy of this book. Now, this is my doings. I didn't go to a, a editor. I didn't go to a publisher. I did this book, and here's how it was done. I typed all of this, got it all ready, found the little graphics. You see all these little graphics? Can't even tell from the back. One of them, it shows a man at an anvil, hammering down on an anvil. Well, my grandfather was a blacksmith. That's what he did, part of what he did for a living. Here's a baby's cradle. I'm sure what that story was about was when my grandmother had to work in the fields and in the garden, and she had the baby to care for, and she took the cradle to the garden, and the family dog would lay beside the cradle while she was in the cornfield hoeing, and she knew her baby would be taken care of because that dog would be sitting there to protect the baby in the cradle. I don't have to look at it to know that's what that story must have been about. And here's one. It just goes all the way through. I've got photographs, see? These are copies. That was my brother, Bug. He's the one who was killed in um, World War II. 
and that's my two oldest sisters. It's a very faint picture, but they were going to their, uh, I think it was to their prom. You can't tell much about their dresses, but I can tell you one thing. They were probably the two prettiest girls at the prom. Let's see what else. Did they come across anymore? Now on this one, you can see all these little silhouettes. I'm sure I was describing all of my sisters and my brothers. This was when I went down the list, one by one, naming them and telling the stories about them. Um, I've got the graphics all the way through. Cut them out of magazines anywhere I could find something. Pictures of little carousels, children, the pot-bellied stove, the farmer, goodness gracious. I don't know where I found all of these. Here's one with of a small table radio. I know without a doubt that was the story about the Feta radio. The, we were the only family in the neighborhood who owned a Feta radio. Now here's your cutie. Take a close look at that little thing. Well, not the prettiest baby I've ever seen in the world, but she's got a little curl on top of her head. See the little calico homemade dress? She got on the black high top shoes and her socks are not socks, they're stockings. Mama rolled them down and folded them down over the top of her black shoes. She may have had a little rickrack around the sleeve and around the neck of the dresses. All of us babies wore little homemade dresses. And of course, you know who that is. It's me. It's me. That's the picture that Mama was given when I won the baby beauty contest. I hate to think what the other babies looked like if that if I won the contest. But that was back in 1938. 1938. Ooh, we're getting close to 100 years there. Oh, this, I love this. I just love this picture, and my sister hated it. See this little picture right here at the top? That's my sister, the, the one that they said I look so much like. If you look real close, she, now she dressed up there. She's got her little purse and probably her Sunday dress. And I don't know whose house she was standing beside, but I think it was one of our neighbors. If you look real close, she got on a pair of those cotton stockings. The cotton stockings, you know, I don't know how they held them up, if they pinned them to their underpants or if they had to use garters. But those stockings in the photograph itself, you can see they're just as wrinkled as they can be. And of course, the girls at that age, they had to wear those stockings to school because they had to have something to keep their legs warm. She hated that picture. The other one is my sister, Jeanette. She was two years younger than this sister, and that was our neighbor, Harold. I've got wonderful stories about Harold. Uh, I can't go into them now, but he's one young boy that stayed with my family when Daddy was away at work, and Mama paid him a quarter a night to stay with us. So this is the book. I'm turning the wrong way. This is my book that I started with. I went to the newspaper office, and I gave them my first copy, and I said, here, I want you to put this in a binding. And so I said, I want 60 of them. So they printed 60 books and this was it. And I sent them all out to aunts, uncles, and cousins to give them a little, little background 
And of course, here is my mother. Can you see that? That's my mother. She was in her 80s and she was at my, well actually she was at Jan's wedding. It was an outdoor wedding and mama was all dressed up. So she was in her 80s and look at her hair. She did not have color on her hair. So that's the last picture in the book, I think. And this is something that will interest you. My grandfather had the general store and he had his grocery ledgers. And this is what the pages in his ledger looked like. I think this was his. Okay, this was here. This was a Brooks. It looked like A.J. Brooks, seven fifteen nineteen and nine, over a hundred years ago, and this is a list of the things that he would buy from the store. And of course, they charged things, and they'd come in on payday and they'd pay what they owed. And next to it is a will. It is a will of John Rowlett, my mother's great-grandfather. I think it's her great-grandfather. I'd have to read up on it. I've forgotten some of those things, but these were all relatives. But I've got Pep's, I've got his uh, grocery ledger. And here is another page. This is for Garrett Eastep. My dad's name was Garrett Hobart Eastep. But this is not him. Because at that time, he was only about 13 years old. There was another Garrett o uh, Eastep. And the date of this ledger is 8-15-1999. Some of the things, oh, they always, they always uh, bought tobacco. I like this. One pair of shoes and socks, $2.35. That's what I like to read, how much everything costs. Lard and starch, 40 cents. Flour, now I don't know how much flour he bought, but it was 90 cents. I like this, this combined, my hearing aid bothering me, okay. The combined soap and tobacco. 10 cents. Coffee was 15 cents. That's probably a can of coffee. Coal oil, a nickel. Oh, let's see if I can find any interesting items. The basic things. Chickens. 74, no, I, I don't think that's right. The chicken could have been an item that Grandpa Rowlett bought from the farmers. He would buy eggs from the farmers and he would buy chickens from the farmers. And it's hard to tell if this is 74 cents or seven dollars and forty cents. If it was seven forty, that meant he bought a whole lot of chickens. Uh, credit by cash, ten dollars. So this gives you, tells you what he sold in his general store. He sold towels. Nutmeg, 
sardines. It goes on and on. Potted ham. Would you believe back then, in 1909, they had those little cans of potted ham. You know, they had the little key on the top of the can. Well, this was for two cans. Two cans of potted ham was 20 cents. Oh, uh, that's enough. That you get the idea of what the basic things were. Here was once where it had the broom, fifty-five cents. Two plugs of Snaps tobacco. I never heard of Snaps tobacco. I've heard of other brands. Days work tobacco. That's what my dad used. Sardines. I think they came by the store. The working men would come into the store and they would buy cans of sardine for their lunches. 14 cents. Here he, being a blacksmith, here's a charge for two mule shoes and nails, 25 cents. That's enough from, from Pap's general ledger. But I wanted you to see this was the first book I did, and I did it strictly for family. But... I also put the book on Kindle. I wasn't ready for, didn't know how to get it published. So I just sent it in to Amazon and had it done for Kindle. So if you're interested in Room at the Foot of the Bed, you can get it if you've got a Kindle. So that's all I wanted to show you and let you see that I've got the book standing behind me so you can always be reminded if you're wanting to in buy a book. It's great for Christmas gifts. Christmas gifts are very hard to choose for people anymore. They've already got everything you can think of. So for people who like to read and people who like true stories and people who like to cook you got a good choice here of either of these three books and as just an extra accessory for those who have kindles you can read about room at the foot of the bed thank you for watching me and I appreciate all the comments I try to read them all and I I answer whenever I can think of something worthwhile. You have a good day tomorrow. Tomorrow's Sunday, and I'm sure you will be worshiping the Lord tomorrow. And I'll be thinking about you and waiting for your comments on my story about Benjamin. So I'm going to try to get this on before I go to bed. Thank you.